Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the far-right Oath Keepers Militia, was sentenced on Thursday to 18 years in prison after being convicted of seditious conspiracy for his role in the January 6 attack on Congress. Prosecutors sought a 25-year term. Lawyers for Rhodes said he should be sentenced to time served since his arrest in January last year. Before handing down the sentence, the US District Judge Amit Mehta told a defiant Rhodes he posed a continued threat to the US government, saying it was clear he wants democracy in this country to devolve into violence. He said the moment you are released, whenever that may be, you will be ready to take up arms against your government. Members of the Oath Keepers took an active role in the insurrection on January 6, when a mob, incited by the disgraced former President Donald Trump, smashed its way into the Capitol, attempting to stop the certification of Joe Biden's election win. Prosecutors successfully made the case that Rhodes and his group prepared an armed rebellion, including stashing arms at a Virginia hotel, meant for quick transfer to Washington, D.C. Other members of the Oath Keepers, some convicted of seditious conspiracy, are due to be sentenced this week and next week. Members of another far-right group, the Proud Boys, will face sentencing on similar convictions later this year. But what about the instigators of this coup, on this attempt to overturn the legitimate election in 2020? And what about those who are supposedly or seemingly untouchable by the Justice Department. Well, there are plenty of other characters in this cast, not least the disgraced former president himself, Donald Trump, who is currently at the mercy of several investigations by the special prosecutor Jack Smith. But what about people like the former White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows? He has very much been the linchpin in much of the organisation of this coup, this attempted coup. Uh, his cell phone and the messages that he received and sent have very much been at the centre of evidence that was seen at the January 6 investigation. What about Dan Scavino, the former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for Communications, or Cash Patel, the former Defence Department official? Or even Steve Bannon, the former Trump adviser, who continues to spew propaganda about what happened that day. And then there's the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, a central figure in Trump's bid to overturn the 2020 election on the basis of unfounded allegations of widespread voter fraud, which simply didn't happen. And we now know all of those cases, 62 of them, that Trump and his people took to various judges, including Trump-appointed judges, all of those cases were thrown out. They simply didn't have any evidence to suggest that any election fraud took place that would change the outcome of the 2020 election. And then you have characters like Ali Alexander or Roger Stone, the longtime Republican operative and Trump ally who was reportedly in Washington, D.C. on January 5th and 6th. He spoke at the rally on January 5th and was slated to speak on January 6th, where he previously said he was planning to lead a march to the Capitol from the rally. Uh, Alex Jones, the conspiracy theorist who worked with rally organisers to facilitate a, a donation to provide what he described as 80% of the funding for the January 6th rally. And then you have characters that provided legal advice, like Jenna Ellis, an attorney who pushed various election fraud conspiracies on Donald Trump's behalf, or the infamous Sidney Powell, another attorney who pushed election fraud conspiracies, and Jeffrey Clark, the former Department of Justice official reportedly involved in efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. And then advisers to Donald Trump, Jason Miller, the former senior advisor to the 2020 campaign, John Eastman, the attorney who helped craft Trump's argument that the election was stolen and appeared in the hat on stage at the January 6 rally. Michael Flynn, the former Trump national security advisor who admitted lying to the FBI twice, eventually pardoned by Donald Trump. He was involved in the meeting about how the Trump campaign wanted to promote the lie that the election was stolen. And then you have characters like John McKenty and Kayleigh McEnany and Stephen Miller, 
people who were very much part of this conspiracy that helped spread the message that the election was in some way stolen. And then finally, a character who actually went on TV several times since and has exposed the entire plot to overturn the election, the the, the coup in plain sight. That's Donald Trump's one-time trade advisor, who, following the US Capitol riot, has consistently defended efforts to overturn the election, Peter Navarro, who, for some reason, didn't think that any of this stuff was illegal. So despite the Oath Keeper's founder, Stuart Rhodes, being sentenced to 18 years over the January 6 attack, it wasn't actually his idea. It wasn't actually his plan. This plan, this whole coup, is very much at the feet of the former president, Donald Trump. He was the one that was refusing to accept the results of the election. He was the one who encouraged people to storm the Capitol. He was the one involved with the fake electors and this whole plan for Mike Pence to not certify the election. Um, And he was ultimately the mastermind behind the Capitol insurrection. And for that reason, it's Donald Trump that should be getting 18 years for seditious conspiracy. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me every day on the 5-Minute News podcast and on Sundays on the weekend show with Midas Touch.